Hi, this is Michael Becker, and welcome to this installment of the MCORTIS Mobile Insight Series. With me today is Matt Silk, the co-founder and head of strategy for Waterfall. Matt, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hey, Michael. How are you today? Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. I'm excited for a fun conversation. Absolutely. So Waterfall has been in the industry a long time. So, and you, you have a tremendous number of insights that you're, you're having an opportunity to share with us today. So let's start with helping us understand what Waterfall is, who you, who you are, what do you do? Waterfall helps brands, agencies, and technology companies engage with their customers over the mobile channel. Well, let's get back to what that really means in just a minute. But essentially, you're a technology company that gives the tools to a marketer, a brand, a retailer, their agencies to be able to do that engagement. So before we dig into that any deeper, what exactly are marketers struggling with when it comes to engagement, when it comes to interacting with that individual that's got a phone in their hand or some other connected device? What challenges and opportunities uh, are they trying to overcome or uh, take advantage of? And what, who is this person they're trying to serve? Sure. I mean, let's, let's look at one of the biggest segments that we service in the restaurant industry. What is the restaurant, try, restaurant industry trying to do from a marketing standpoint? In general, they're trying to find more customers to come into their restaurant. They're trying to drive those customers to make one more visit into the restaurant. And they're trying to drive them to buy one more item each time they come into that restaurant. So what do we do on the marketing side um, to help them engage that mobile customer? We allow them to opt into the list and then drive traffic into the store, drive service engagements, and really help that brand engage that customer in ways that they never were before because they now have the tools to talk to them and have a real conversation with their customers over this mobile channel. I see. So what you're doing is you're enabling the marketer to uh, essentially – connect with that individual through within their marketing mix to your point get that individual or invite somebody to opt into some form of database crm communication and particularly uh for your waterfall text messaging but it could be other mediums and you'll share with that share that with us in a minute um but in particularly you allow that marketer to then use their marketing mix to engage and interact with the consumer is that correct exactly the holy grail for a marketer today is to engage on every single channel in the right place at the right time with the right message. We've heard that message in the marketing world for a long time. Now they're calling it omni-channel. It's been cross-channel, it's been multi-channel. There's even debates around which word is the right word at any given time. Um, but what we do is we help that marketer leverage some of these channels that have been a little bit elusive over the last 10 years um, and bring them a set of web-based tools and APIs to simplify that campaign management, subscriber management, and messaging for some of those channels, specifically SMS, MMS, Passbook, Push, and IVR. Okay. So with that in mind, can you give us a concrete example? And maybe you can think about it in this, in this, you know, the three areas that you, you suggested that marketers are struggling with, that area of reach. How do I reach more uh, people? That area of driving foot traffic. How am I driving as a restaurant executive more people into my store? Um, and then whether or not that's on premise where they're eating in the store or they're just simply picking it up or they're having it delivered to their house, who knows? There's a lot of different plays there, but that's, that's the idea of football. It's not just that they're walking in the store, that they're somehow engaging in the store and so that more food's coming out. And then that idea of engagement, that they're interacting with that person more, more often than ultimately with them, you know, in the case at the transactional level, adding more to the basket uh, every time they purchase from the store. So can you give us an example of uh, one or two companies that may be doing that really well and give us some uh, insight as to where, uh, you know, say messaging and communications falls into those three areas and how? Sure. I mean, let's, let's talk about the reach one first. Um, from a reach perspective, the best way to use mobile messaging is really, we like to tell our clients, activate your traditional media. So when you're doing a newspaper ad or you're doing a television ad, putting that text call to action, it's a really, uh, it's a really simple ask. It's something, you're not asking them to go to a website, you're not asking them to pick up the phone, you're not asking them to make a purchase right then and there, you're simply asking them to pull out their phone, send a text message and join a list for future sales and marketing. So it's a pretty easy call to action and nice way to start to build that relationship for future sales and marketing, whatever it may be. And okay. my favorite... Let's pause there real quick though, but that's a little bit different than typical marketing strategies. So a lot of the times what a, uh, a large restaurant or, uh, you know, since we're talking about restaurants, let's stay there. They'll do a lot of television advertising. They'll do a lot of broadcast media. And so reach historically has been 
push a bunch of uh, you know, messaging, advertising out into the marketplace, and that gives you reach. Uh, now, I understand, as I understand it, and based on my experience, you know, it's illegal to just message somebody without having them had opted in first. So for you, you're not saying text messaging is necessarily a channel for reach and that you're actually sending somebody a message, but what you're suggesting is that the role messaging and communication uh, capabilities play in that kind of area of reach is you still do your advertising, you still do your physical own media, but you amplify that media by adding a call to action and inviting that person to engage and interact. Did I summarize that okay? Absolutely. I mean, not, not only are you amplifying that existing reach, you can actually measure your media a little bit better. I mean, one of the typical classic problems in advertising is how do I measure that advertisement? How do I know which is really driving traffic or not? By putting that text call to action, you have a really low barrier to entry to get people to engage. So if you put a compelling offer onto that television and add and ask people to text in, it's a great way to engage that customer and figure out who's really engaging and watching that television ad versus that newspaper buy versus that radio advertisement. So you can add that messaging call to action to all of those and see where are you getting those opt-ins? Where are you getting that customer attraction? So it's a great way to really measure your traditional media. So a good example of that is my son loves Subway. And so the other day I was reading a newspaper, saw a, a print ad that said text this to that to uh, start getting Subway offers. And so since then, I've been getting some Subway text messaging offers that have, you know, have been timely and we've used it to be able to go in and get discounts or some relevant uh, you know, promotion that they've had on, on any given time. That, that would be an example of that. Exactly, coupons and offers are where most retail and restaurant companies using our technology start with. Start with, but not necessarily not necessarily in there. Okay, so we talked about reach and the way you would play within reach. What happens in football and, and how does that work? Yeah, uh, once you build this list, this is a great way to drive people into the store. So imagine that same example in the restaurant space. If you wanna drive people into uh, your restaurant for lunch on Tuesdays, because you know that's your slowest day, well, if you send out a million emails on Tuesday at 10 o'clock, how many people are really gonna get that email in time for lunch? Or do you actually have to send that email out you know, the day before to make sure you hit your entire list? and have people see it at the right time and get that impulse buy. Um, it's a challenge. It's typically what marketers do. They default to email because it's something that they know and have done for a long time. Well, if it's lunchtime and you want to have someone come in within 15 minutes or 30 minutes, can you think of a better channel to drive people to do something more than text messaging? When people get a text, they see that light go on. They answer that text within seconds. I mean, the response rates and the time to actually open and read a text compared to email, it's an astronomical difference. So that driving lunch traffic or driving people into a store during slow times for you know, a flash sale or something like that, those are great use cases where text messaging and mobile messaging MMS is really gonna complement and enhance your overall CRM. Now, I'm not saying it's ever gonna replace your app strategy or your email, this is a compliment. You have to figure out how to blend all those different communications into a robust cross-channel communication strategy. So I use Subway as a kind of a reach example as my own personal experience. Can you give us an example of a brand that's using this strategy to drive footfall into a store in that kind of timely, contextually relevant way and effectively? Large pizza brand uh, would send out a blast to a million people every list, to a million person list every single week on a regular basis. And they consistently saw 10 to 15 percent use those coupon codes online. They were trying to drive people online to make purchases. So every time they hit the button for a million people, they'd see a 10 to 15 percent conversion rate. That's astronomical. You don't see that in any other marketing channel. So they continue to uh, you know, build that list and just drive more traffic. Um, another example on the burger side of the restaurant industry, uh, they have seen just driving traffic into stores. Every time they send out a coupon or offer, they've been able to drive $19 of spend for every dollar they've invested into their mobile program. So imagine a 19 to one return for every dollar you spent. It's pretty easy to justify that spend when you're going in and pitching this to a new client, when you have numbers like that backing you up. So that's absolutely fantastic. And what I liked what you just said too is when we're talking about footfall and traffic in today's digitally uh, enabled world, it's not just the physical store. As you said, it's also online. 
get them to go online, get them to go into the store, get them engaging directly with the brand's channel to be able to purchase the food. And to your point, it's driving tremendous economic results at that point. Absolutely. I mean, the great thing about this technology channel is it doesn't have to be that deal or coupon. That's where most people start, but it could be service feedback. I mean, imagine right after you got your Subway um, sandwich, you got a text message that said, hey, how was your experience in the store? Rated on a scale of one to 10. You know, that's such an easy ask for you that you'd probably respond. But do you ever look at the bottom of that coupon? I mean, the bottom of your digital receipt and then go to the website and fill out the survey? Probably not. So the number of people that are filling out that survey, which may be 10 or 15 questions, is probably really, really slim and really and a really small number. But the amount of people that would respond one through 10 to a quick text message like that and give immediate feedback is probably 40, 50, 60%. And we've seen that with real clients. So there's a ton of service use cases as well where you can use that same technology. But the key is really to build your list and to start engaging your customer base because you do have to opt in your customers and make sure they're willing to communicate with you over this particular channel. Okay, so you, you made a transition now from footfall to engagement, and you were suggesting engagement's not just about one more offer, one more offer, one more offer. It's also about starting to establish a relationship with that person, asking them, how's it going? You know, actually, I just heard, I just um, read about a, uh, an interesting book that just came out about that aspect of loyalty, and one of the points that they made in terms of the, one of the stellar engagements is, you know, engage them, invite them to come back. Those are all the key things of loyalty. It's not just about buy more, buy more, buy more. Uh, and do you agree with that? Absolutely. I mean, I think when people go into a conversation about mobile engagement, they really need to think about that slice of their customer base as their most loyal customers, their most valuable customers, and think about them. How can I treat them as my VIPs? There's data out there that we can dig up that Domino's has come out and said their mobile customers are, you know, two to five times more valuable than all of their other customers. Walgreens has said the same thing. Um, we can pull up those stats and send them around af afterwards. Um, but it's been very clearly established that that mobile customer is worth a lot. And brands should really take that to heart and think about, okay, if I get the permission to talk to this customer over this extremely valuable channel, then I want to make use of it. And I want to make sure to surprise and delight them each and every time we communicate with them. So giving the best offers or giving the best access. And that could be a coupon or a deal, but it could also be engagement around, you know, tell me what new products I want to add. I mean, imagine if you are on a VIP list and you got to tell Subway, you know, what sandwich you want next just by sending a text message. You know, that's a cool way that they can engage. And for a couple pennies, they just got their most valuable customers to give them product feedback in near real time. That's a great way to do it as long as you build that list and then start to build that conversation. So we like to tell people, don't just message, have a conversation. And we really take that to heart when we talk to our clients and try to figure out how can you extend your CRM conversations and make that a more valuable engagement with your particular client or customer. And it's, it's actually not one or the other. I, I mean, I guess basically what I'm, I'm hearing you say too is you, you want to be inviting and engaging and interacting with this user. And it, it, is there not a way to combine all of these things together a little bit at once? So for example, just before the Super Bowl this year, um, Taco Bell did something very cool where they use traditional media, they use social on the traditional reach media to invite the individual to then opt into a list, whether or not it was text message or email. And if they did that, they would then receive a message in the, the Saturday afternoon from the Super Bowl to be able to go into the store and be the first people to actually try their new, their new meal item. And so that did a lot of really great things. One, it was fun and compelling. Two, I got instantaneous reward and in that I got to be a VIP immediately by getting to get something that nobody else got before. Um, plus, I got to social share it. Uh, do you agree with that kind of strategy of what Taco Bell did? And do you see other clients like yours uh, starting to, as they get more advanced, um, you know, integrating it and leveraging this at every stage along their, uh, the way they interact with the clients? Absolutely. I mean, as I was saying, I think you have to look at mobile engagement as just a piece of your overall CRM strategy and leverage the best channel for the particular job that you're trying to accomplish. So we never would tell you, you shouldn't do email and you shouldn't do an app and you shouldn't do push notifications or beacons. Those are all part of a marketer's toolkit and that's how they engage their customers. The key and the challenge uh, that makes it fun and exciting is how do I blend all of those communications into the optimal customer 
um, communication strategy. And one of the really important things is making sure you give those customers the choice, giving them that customer communications preferences panel where they can say, you know, these are the 15 communications we're sending out to customers. Let them choose between email and SMS and MMS and push or whatever types of notica notifications and channels you're leveraging. So those are some of the things that we constantly talk about with our clients. And I think using the right tool and technology and trying to be technology agnostic, even though we're, you know, supporting a handful of those technologies, we'd rather do long term, you know, deliver value for our clients and keep them around for years and years to come. So it seems like in addition to being an enabler of all of this experience and capability, you also are a company that provides advice and can help guide and nurture uh, a, a marketer or you know, in the case, a restaurant marketer or a retail marketer, the marketer through the evolution of this process as they learn to adopt and integrate it into their business in the unique way that works for them. Is that, is that, is that the case? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're a SaaS company, but we do have an amazing services team that have really helped clients build multi-million person lists and help them figure out, you know, when is the right time to engage? How many times a week should I engage? Those are great questions and things that we can bring hundreds of clients experience and millions and millions of messages of experience to the table at any time we have a client engagement. So we absolutely help our clients on the strategy side. We bring the best practices. We help them understand the compliance landscape. That's one of the bigger challenges that we, we deal with on a pretty regular basis. So just helping our clients know and understand how to do things right uh, is something that we're doing on a regular basis. Oh, fantastic. And, and I think so really someone that is coming to you, they should be very comfortable that, you know, I don't, if I don't know how to use the hammer, the nail and the wood, you'll help me out. And then I'll, over time, I'll be able to stay, take more and more control over that myself. Now you brought up a lot of other things. So text messaging is really the core of your business, but uh, you, you mentioned earlier uh, Passbook. You mentioned earlier some other elements. You, mentioned, you keep referring to this term SaaS and API. Um, what about this? I've heard this concept SM, of MMS when you and I have talked about before. Uh, as we're kind of wrapping up today's interview, can you shed some light on what some of that terminology means? How does that fit within the overall experience within the context that we've been talking about? And kind of just uh, yeah, help, help level set people a little bit. Yeah, no problem. So SMS is short messaging service. That's your standard text message of 160 characters. It can be interactive. That's when it gets engaging and fun. Um, or it can just be an outbound message. Uh, MMS is multimedia messaging. So generally it's pictures, but it can also be video and audio. So if you want to send out a picture or a short video clip with your message, you can send that out just like uh, trading a text message or a small video clip or a picture with a friend person to person, a business can now send out multimedia messages. Um, IVR is interactive voice response. Um, that's something that's been around for a number of years. So if you want to record a video clip and actually send it out as a voice call, um, and you can also make that interactive. So after they hear the voice clip, they can press one to join the list. They can press two to do something else. So it's another great tool to have in your toolbox. Um, Passbook, that was really made famous by Apple. Uh, between Passbook and Google Wallet, um, that's an app on your phone that allows you to do tickets and loyalty cards and coupons and offers and get some app-like functionality without the huge investment of building out your app. Uh, push notifications and beacons, those are more app-like functionality. Uh, you have to have that app strategy and have that app set of users. Um, once you have that app set of users, they can opt in for push notifications, very similar to a text message, but within the app, you would actually get a notification um, that looks and feels and acts uh, very similar to that notification, like an SMS, um, but it comes up and has a couple buttons and can drive you somewhere else in the app. Um, and a beacon uh, notification, uh, beacons have become a lot more uh, talked about in the marketing circles. A lot of retailers in particular are doing trials um, where they're actually installing sensors uh, throughout the store. And if you're opted in and you allow that brand to engage with you, when you get close to that sensor, they can send you a message. So it's a great way to trigger uh, messages that come through either as a text message or a push notification, depending on what you've opted into. Did I, did I cover all the, the terms or were there a few I missed? No, no, I, I think so. But how does it all come together? So again, so let's talk about Waterfall a little bit. Uh, and so, you know, like the SaaS platform, I think that was one of the terms that you missed and API is another term that you missed. I mean, 
how does all of this, how would you say work with a marketer's existing CRM solution? So I'm presuming that say, the, the, the one customer that's sending a million uh, text messages a week, presumably they have other CRM infrastructure, they have other data infrastructure. You know, do they have to give that all away and then and just work with you? Or uh, t tell us a little bit more, more about those terms and how this really works. Or as a service. Um, a common technology term, APIs is application programming interface. Um, so <clears throat> whether you're logging on to our web-based interface, generally a brand or an agency representing a brand is going to log on to our site and they're going to build their campaign. They're going to segment their customers. They're going to hit send and actually send out their messages. That's the typical use case of our online platform. Um, some other clients on the technology side may want to build some of those messaging features that we offer in our web-based interface directly into their platform. So if you're an email service provider and you don't want to learn everything that we've learned in the last 10 years, um, you can build off of our APIs and we can help you build robust messaging features much faster than learning you know, all of the lessons that we've learned in the last 10 years and millions of engineering hours that we've uh, already invested into this space. Um, so that's SaaS and APIs. That just kind of stimulated something too that we've just brought up that's unique as well. Waterfall is this core enabler of messaging capability and really communications capabilities because it's not just SMS, it's MMS, it's passbook mediums as communication, IVR, push notifications, kind of that whole umbrella term of messaging capability to which you become experts in. So Again, agencies, retailers, brands can come and use you as a mechanism for marketing and promotion and engaging people in this, in the case of like restaurant, reach, football, and engagement. But what I also heard you just add too is that you're a fundamental enablement technology capability for other B2B enterprises or institutions as well. But also it kind of gives me a sense as well that, so let's say you're a bank and you want to integrate you know, uh, security alerts within your ATM system, they could, they could use Waterfall for something of that nature as well. So that's kind of that services layer uh, that you referred to earlier. So there's just a lot of different ways that people could be integrating messaging capability into their overall experience that they have with their customer uh, and the people they serve by leveraging, uh, you know, people like, uh, in organizations like Waterfall. Absolutely. So, I mean, some of our clients want to build campaigns directly on our platform and they're going to use us as a siloed marketing channel. We also, through that same suite of APIs, allow them to sync that data back and forth. So we want our clients to sync the data that we're collecting on a regular basis back to their home systems and CRM systems. We want to integrate with their email service providers because the more we can help them connect those channels to engage with that customer and have that one voice to a customer, regardless of channel, the more successful they're going to be as a brand. So we absolutely want to integrate with whatever systems they have internally or any other marketing technology providers they're already working with. So we can do that on an integration basis and just pass data back and forth. We have an open data model, so our clients can pull data in and out of our system in real time, uh, in batches, nightly, weekly, it doesn't matter to us. It's their data, we're an enterprise technology play. And likewise, if we wanted to integrate with their email service provider or their credit card processor, we can use that suite of APIs and help them build those services into those other communication platforms or those other communication systems. So we're really open and we make it really simple for our clients. We're experts in these mobile communications. We don't care how we deliver those services. We just want to help our clients engage because the more they build their list, the more they engage in the channel, the more they're going to invest with us. So we're happy to play a supporting role and help someone expose features in another technology platform or be the platform. It's a very open and simple to us. So in a nutshell, so marketers that, fo yeah, that really embrace and, and the core of marketing, which is getting to know your customer, getting to know the insights of the, and the needs of the individuals you serve. Once they've kind of figured that out and then they've mapped the various engagement points that they have with uh, the customers they serve along that individual's journey, whether or not it's upper funnel awareness activities, in the store, signage, et cetera, or post-sale transaction and engagement, Waterfall is there to provide uh, that, that connectivity and the, the enablement for a marketer to have communications with individuals either en masse or at an individual level at scale. Absolutely. Decent enough summary? Yeah. I mean, when, we, 
when we start talking to a customer, we want to know about what are your marketing challenges? What are your business problems? And then we'll help you figure out what are the right solutions. So we don't talk about solutions. We don't demo the platform right away. It starts with a business conversation. And sometimes we walk into that business conversation and say, you know what? Another you know, technology is probably best for you and we can bring a partner to the mix. Because we've been in the mobile space for so long, we know so many app companies, we know so many agencies, we know so many email service providers, we've integrated with a lot of these players. So making sure a client is working with top tier providers uh, is really where we start. If they wanna use our solutions, if our solutions are the best, and of course, we're going to try to sell them a solution. So, so having said all of that, though, you again, you found that companies that really do embrace this idea of direct communication and engagement with market, with individuals at scale are seeing significant results. And could you kind of let's kind of wrap up this conversation with the types of results that marketers can see when they do it really effectively? I believe you said you know fifteen percent response rates and a million list on a weekly basis, ongoing on average. You know, you know, 19x, 5 to 19x return uh, for every dollar spent. I mean, those are amazing results. Yeah, I mean, those, those are amazing numbers. And, you know, let me take it out of the restaurant space. We also have clients in the social activism space um, that are constantly sending out communications to try to get people to join petitions or send out emails. And some of those clients are seeing 20, 30, 40% response rates every single time they send out a blast. And those blasts are out to hundreds of thousands of people every single time. So it's not just the restaurant and retail space. It's not just coupons and deals. Um, it's really just driving people to action and trying to let people know. And I think the key is just making it really easy and simple. People that opt into a list want to engage with your brand. They want your content. And if you make it easy to engage and you give them great content, they'll respond. Well, Matt, with that, thank you very much. So if people listening into this interview say, God, I got to get me some of that, how do they reach you? What's the best way to approach you? Um, what, what are the next steps for them? Absolutely. So you can always visit waterfall.com um, and just uh, click that you want to contact us. Um, you can always connect with me on LinkedIn, on Twitter, I'm Matthew Silk. Um, on Twitter and uh, Matt Silk on LinkedIn. So feel free to reach out to me. We'd love to chat with you and see if we can help you engage with your customers over the mobile channel. Well, Matt, thank you very much. It's been Michael Becker with the M Cordis Mobile Insights Series. And Matt, I hopefully we can invite you back uh, in the com coming months or two and you can share some more insights with us. Sounds great. Thanks, Michael. It was great. Thanks again. Bye.